Welcome back to another fantastic episode of Ready to Die Fighting. I'm Chris, and today I want to talk about self-defense, specifically self-defense for when you are on your back. Now that's a position that nobody really wants to be in, and it can seem like you're in really big trouble if that's where you end up. And, and that's true. In a street fight, <laughs> you don't want to end up on your back. But that doesn't mean that the fight is over. Um, if you watch UFC and MMA fights, plenty of those fights have ended with um, one of the fighters being on his back and winning. It happens all the time. Jiu-jitsu matches and stuff. Now, I know a street fight and an MMA match aren't the same thing. You aren't a world-class athlete. It's not the same thing. But I'm just trying to make the point that this doesn't mean that the fight is over. You still have a lot of options from there. There's still a lot of things that you can do to make yourself, um, to defend yourself and to also attack and win that fight. And that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, so first off, let me be clear. I'm not going to teach any techniques. Um, this is something that is really in the realm of jujitsu, and I am a white belt of jujitsu at Tenth Planet here in Detroit. Actually, it's in Livonia. I did an interview with Adelaide Cleveland, and he talked. He's the uh, instructor and owner of Tenth Planet uh, Detroit, and he he's a great instructor. It's a fantastic school. I cannot recommend it enough. Um, this is COVID time, so the gym is closed but I will link to the website down below and you know, shoot him an email, contact him, see if there's, he was giving some online classes and things like that, see what, see what your options are. I highly, highly recommend Jiu Jitsu for ground fighting. I especially recommend it for women. There's, there's so much that you can learn. And there are a lot of uh, other sites, other YouTube channels who do a great job of teaching them. Uh, some of them like Jiu Jitsu, the Grappling Academy, uh, Gracie Breakdown, um, there's another one I like, Alec Balding is another good one, uh, there, there's so many. And so I'm not going to teach techniques because I can teach you the white belt way of doing things. And plus I really do believe that you need to, especially as a beginner, need to get into a gym and get some hands-on instruction. There's so many little details that you can watch a YouTube video but until you get with an instructor and get with a partner and try the things out, it's, you don't fully get it, um, especially as a beginner. But what I can tell you about is some strategies. And I think that's a much better approach when we're talking about self-defense. Is strategies that you can use, some attributes that you can build. And by attributes, I mean things that can be applied to basically all techniques. Things like agility, power, strength, focus, uh, flexibility, you know, those are more attributes. Um, you can get some movements down that would help you to be able to defend yourself. Develop a strategy, and by strategy I don't mean if the person does this then I do this specific thing, but it's like, no, your, your, your plan of attack more so. Um, so, which, you'll see what I mean in a second here. So the first thing I want to talk about is, um, you know, aside from that little disclaimer, um, and I got a list here because there's so many things that I can talk about here. Um, let's see, the first thing I want to talk about is you're on the ground. This is not, this isn't going to feel great. Chances are the person's going to be on top of you. That's a good way I can, there you go, go this way. Chances are the person's going to be on top of you, right? And they may be punching you in the face, they may be choking you, whatever. Um, this isn't fun, this is scary. There's things that you can do to make it maybe not quite as scary <laughs> or improve your chances of being able to get out of the situation. The first one is keep your head up. Now, this isn't comfortable. Our muscles here, generally speaking, aren't all that strong. You know, we're, we're pretty strong holding our heads up this way. You know, that's, that's pretty natural for us. You know, even as babies, we spend a lot of time more on our bellies. And so the back um, neck muscles are stronger. We can hold our heads up pretty well this way. This way, 
the abs are engaged, my neck muscles are engaged. This is a lot harder, but we need to build this up because what happens here, somebody is punching you, and if they land those punches, oh, oh, oh. If your head is up off the ground, you can absorb some of that, you know, before, you, before your head hits the, the, the ground. You can also, in this way, you have some movement. You can, you can actually evade those punches some. I can slip, I can move side to side quite a bit. If my head is off the ground, I can be mobile and try to fight back. If my head is resting on the ground and someone punches me, if they land that punch, the only thing that's absorbing that impact is my skull. That's it. It's just, I'm getting, absorbing all that impact into my skull and into the ground and getting smashed. Also, there's nowhere for me to go. I, it, I can slide some, but I don't have nearly as much mobility if my core isn't engaged and my neck muscles aren't engaged and I'm up. I can do stuff this way. So that's the first thing you want to do. Build these muscles, do sit-ups, practice slipping. Um, you can get somebody you trust to, to sit on top of you and kind of straddle you. And very slowly, calmly, easy punches. All right, just easy, slow punches and practice dodging those punches. You can make, uh, they call this like wearing a helmet. So if you're like this, and you can, you're, you're pretty well covered, and you can use your forearms and your hands to kind of block everything, but um, I can see. I can see just fine here of what's coming, but my face is pretty well protected. I can do this, even like this, I can see just fine. Like, and so by doing this type of movement, you can kind of block and protect your face really well. Not 100%, except the fact you're going to get punched, you're going to get hit, you're going to get hurt. That's going to happen. Self-defense isn't about being bulletproof and uh, having a um, flawless victory. You know, that's, forget that. Accept it. You're, you're going to get hurt. We're trying to minimize that hurt, all right? We're trying to get out of this alive. That's the main goal. Ideally, alive with as little damage as possible but alive. We can take some hits. You're not gonna die from one punch. Unless it's Dwayne Johnson punching you, and Mike Tyson. Then you might die with one punch. But if it's a normal person, you're not gonna die with one punch. You'll be fine. You can take a couple. So practice this. You're basically doing um, it's kind of side to side crunches. You don't have to do them real fast right now, but just build these muscles, build this motion. And so just work on that. See what it feels like um, to have those punches coming at you while you're laying on the ground and making this type of uh, defense work. I was able to completely avoid some of those punches and let him hit my forearms on others. It which hurts. Exactly, it hurts. <laughs> Punching someone in the forearm is going to hurt their fist. <laughs> is the build off of that is kind of what would happen a lot, try to grab. So there's, it's, um, think of ranges. So if you're really close to someone, let me see, I might have to. <laughs> Using this ball as an example, you usually think of this standing up. You know, at this point, I'm far away enough from this ball where I can't hit it. So theoretically, I'm safe. I mean, small motion and I'm in danger, but right now the ball can't hit me. I can't hit the ball. This isn't a terrible position to be in. Right here. I can 
hit this ball with my full force. It's, it's close enough where I can punch it as hard as I can and do a ton of damage from this distance with a lot of different attacks. I can also grab from this range. However, this range, I can't really punch it all that well. I can grab it, but punching, I definitely can't kick. I'm very limited in what I can do. So keeping that same idea, if somebody is on top of you, keeping that same idea in mind, if somebody's on top of you, you either want to keep them as far away as possible using your feet to push them away, right? And that's if they're standing up and they're not on you yet. Get them out of your danger zone. Or if they're, once they're already on top of you, you're better off pulling them close. Get them as close to you as you can because then it's gonna be a lot harder for them to punch you. Now they could have a knife and they could stab you. That is definitely a possibility. And you don't have to have a whole lot of force to stab, especially like in the torso. So this is why they're strategies, not moves. I, I can't say 100% of the time, grab the person's head and pull them close. Eh, that might not be the best approach if they've got a knife. Um, if they got a knife, go for their hands. You probably should just assume they have a knife. Go for their hands, try to control the hands. That's a very, very good strategy. But generally speaking, getting that person close to you, which is a bit counterintuitive, they're not gonna be able to hit you very well certainly not with as much power as they would be able to. And that's a better chance of being able to control that person and maybe even rolling them and getting them off of you or doing your own strikes or whatever. At the very least, you're going to be able to feel what they're doing more. Um, so that's the other part of the strategy. <clears throat> now, backing up a little bit to what I was saying about range, uh, Ryan Hall talked about this uh, in a video, and I think he did a fantastic job explaining this concept, um, but I'm gonna just kinda paraphrase. And, and, and kinda obviously this, this really, I think of this more as in, in boxing and stand-up fighting, but it certainly applies to ground fighting as well. If somebody knocks you down, and they're not on top of you yet, the furthest you're gonna be able to keep away from keep them away from you and kind of sort of kind of sort of be safe is by using your feet right that's the your feet are your longest range of weapon whether you're standing up or sitting down you know my my feet can reach further than my hands can so you want to use your feet if you get knocked down to keep your distance away from this person so If I'm like this, what you want to do is have a hand up to kind of guard his face, put another hand behind you for support, and you can scoot back, scoot forward, you can spin, and practice doing that. You want to keep your feet towards your aggressor, and in doing that, you can launch some pretty powerful kicks or even just weak kicks, you know, just to try to keep them back. You know, you can use your foot to kind of control their body a little bit. Uh, grab their arm if you can, grab their wrist. That's gonna be a distraction and it's gonna help you control that person and help you feel where they're moving. Um, it's pretty amazing. Once you get that tactic, tactical, I don't know, uh, or tactile touch and grip on someone, you can tell just intuitively a lot of times what they're about to do because your body is all connected. If I'm gonna move that way, you could touch me anywhere on my body and you're gonna get little clues that I'm about to move that way. Um, and so get a grip on that person. It's gonna give you a better idea of what they're gonna do. It's gonna be a distraction to them because now they're gonna be trying to make you let go and you're gonna be grip fighting. So then that's the other one hand that, that can't hurt you. It can't punch you, it can't stab you, because you, you've got it now. Uh, so grab a hand if you can. Use your foot to keep that person away as possible and keep your feet in between 
um, your attacker and you. That's going to be your best bet. So this is with my feet, I can kind of keep some distance here. I can control him. I said, attack me. It's a lot harder, right? You keep this like that. I might even be able to knock him down, and now I'm on the offensive. <laughs> it might be harder with a grown man, but here, try again. You push me down. Pretend like you push me down. I fell. Ah. Now you're trying to beat me up. You're trying to beat me up, Nate. Get me. Get me. Get me! <laughs> I'm not even doing real attacks here. I'm just, get me! Keep your feet. And so now, <laughs> this is, I controlled that. It looked like he was getting through. He was gonna get on top of me. I made sure of his, if he's gonna get on top of me, you're gonna get in my guard. You're not gonna get a mount on me. If I can at all, I'll stop it. That's exhausting. And from this position, uh, you can launch some pretty powerful kicks. Uh, the key to that is getting your hips and your butt off the ground, planting a hand, planting a foot, and launching that kick. So let me adjust this just a little bit. So you can do a um, like a slide kick type of deal. If somebody's coming after you, come up on that knee and you can kick. You can do a, a, a front kick. You can get up. A pretty powerful round kick from your knees, from the ground. You can go all the way, like I just did, or you can just come back. You know, you hit somebody in the knee hard enough that you can make them fall, especially if they've got bad knees already. That could be a fight under there, depending on how you hit them. And don't bank on it. Don't bank on it. Keep fighting. But if they've got bad knees already, and you hit them the right way, knock that kneecap, that might be it. It'll certainly buy you some time, if nothing else. Keep attacking. The fight does not end until your opponent is neutralized or you're dead. That's it. You can get stabbed. That doesn't mean you're going to die. Keep fighting. You can get shot. That doesn't mean you're going to die. Keep fighting. Keep fighting until the opponent is gone or dead, neutralized in some kind of way, or you're dead. If one of those two things hasn't happened, you keep fighting. <clears throat> so you can practice this sort of thing and make sure the key here is getting a good base on the ground, but getting your hips up. And then you can kick. And so, you know, knee, whoops, <laughs> knee or foot, you know, whichever way you're more comfortable with. I don't really care. I've seen people do things like this different ways. Depends on who your instructor is, what style you're learning, blah, blah, blah. The point is, get your butt up and kick. Kick hard kick different ways. Um, you can do it with this bottom leg as well. You do that type of thing in the front of somebody's knee, that can definitely uh, buy you time, might make them fall. <laughs> make yourself a harder target. Give the person a reason to be scared of you. They, so that way they're not bullying you, basically. I mean, they're attacking you. You could say they're already bullying you. But there's a big difference between, oh, this person isn't a threat to me at all, and I'm just going to charge and start beating him up, versus, oh, crap, this person just kicked me, and that hurt. I need to proceed with caution now. That can completely change things. That may be enough to deter the person. Maybe they didn't really want to fight. They thought you'd be an easy target. If you hit them just a few times, they might just, it might be enough to say, eh, this isn't worth the hassle. I thought this was going to be easy. I'm out of here. Um, don't bank on that, but it's entirely possible. Uh, so at the very least, it's going to make them respect you a little bit and fear your attack. So now they have to proceed with their own strategy. They have to proceed with caution as opposed to just running towards you and boom, 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 boom. That's a lot harder to fight. 
you want to make this person a little bit scared. You want to make them a little cautious. So, but in order to do that, these things have to hurt. So, boom, get up off the ground and hit it. Make room when you need to. You might want to get closer for whatever reason. Turn, practice these movements. Don't just assume you're going to be able to do them quickly and efficiently when you need to. You might not be able to. Learn now. All right, um, technical get-ups. Uh, I've done a video on these in the past. So, um, you know, if you've seen that, great. We kind of went over these before, but I'm gonna talk about them again because it directly applies to this. Um, when you're scooting like this around, this also gives you an opportunity, if you can get some space, to be able to get up pretty quickly from this position into a fighting stance, and that's called a technical get up. So, you know, you're in this position already. You lift up. Uh, some schools teach to throw a kick before you get up. And that kind of gives you some momentum, and it's also an attack. You know, and you're, and you're attacking your target there is like right around here. But as you can imagine, you, know, you hit that pretty hard, it's gonna pop your knee back. And that's, uh, that is not a good feeling for anybody. So if you can, you can throw a kick first and then you're scooting back like that and getting on your feet. And now I'm already in a fighting stance. So you're like this, you're defending with your hand, you're scooting back, you've kicked a few times, you've made this guy kind of scared of you, so he's given a little bit of space, he wants to avoid those kicks. You don't need a ton of space for this, but you do need some. So make sure you have some space away from your attacker before you attempt to do this. Um, and so what you're doing is you, know, you throw that kick, which will ideally make him back up a little bit again. And then you bring this leg back like that. And so in full speed or whatever, and you're ready to keep fighting. I did a full video on this, so uh, go check that out. And so keep in mind, when you are down on the ground like this, you know, keeping your head up, of course, and you're slipping those punches, you can't defend forever. Eventually, the punches are gonna start getting through, you're gonna get overwhelmed. The more you're just dodging, the more bold this person's gonna get. If all you're doing is dodging and blocking, then they're not scared of you. They realize, you know what, nothing's gonna come to retaliate. I can just pound, 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 pound. They're gonna punch harder and faster, and eventually something's gonna go through because they are fighting you with, with no consequence. You can't let them do that. You gotta give them some consequences. Ideally, for every time you block, you wanna throw an attack back with it. If somebody is on top of you pounding away, that might not be possible, but fight back as much as you can. Grab their arms, grab their head, pull them close, you know, try to choke them. You're not going to be able to choke them, but make that threat. Make them think twice about what they're doing. Make them fear you. Gouge their eyes. Also, you can throw some pretty powerful elbows from this position going that way like a upward elbow. So if you can, you know, evade, 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 and you can kind of grab the back of their head and pull it towards you, you're gonna cause some bleeding. Their blood's gonna get on you, more than likely. Deal with that, deal with it. Your blood or their blood, you know, I'd rather have their blood. <laughs> but. That's a strong elbow. That's a strong elbow. Especially if you can, you know, you should be able to kind of sort of get your hips into it as much as you can. You can get a strong elbow there. Uh, this way, I don't feel as strong. Doesn't mean that you can't, just personally, I don't feel as much strength there. I don't feel like it's as powerful as an, as an attack because I, I, I have a hard time getting the momentum, but 
you know, maybe you can. And certainly, I, I would certainly try. <laughs> but definitely try. Um, so, as you're training here, throw punches as well. Throw elbows. Grab. You know, pretend that there's someone here. Fight for their hands. Grab their hands. Any part of their body you can control, that's one less thing that's a threat to you. Um, and it also creates opportunities for them to mess up that you can take advantage of. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> uh, while, while you have that person's arm, they're now trying to get your arm off of them. And that may create a opportunity for you to strike, for you to try to buck them off of you. Um, I talked about bridges. You know, doing this type of motion to get them off of you, to shrimp out of there. But a lot of times you need some kind of distraction or decoy first, and gripping someone can cause that. It can also give you an opportunity, if you're fighting this person, they may actually lean back away from you. If you hit them with an elbow and, you know, make them bleed, or they, they may lean back, which, is be, which would be great. That would be almost ideal because if they're leaning back, they can't really hit you anymore. And once they're leaning back, you can start to get up. You could potentially throw them off of you. So another motion I want you to work on is, uh, let's see, what's the best way to show this? So it's not quite a sit up, but if you're like this, you know, plant your feet, get, pick a side, you know, and that's really going to depend maybe on how this person is moving. But pick a side, drop that leg down, and as you do a kind of a sit up, pop up on your elbow, and then use that momentum, keep this arm up. And so you're either blocking, you're stiff arming them, you're punching them, you're elbowing them, you've, whatever. There's actual sweeps and throws from here. And then you can come up here. So you're here. And they're choking you and all this, blah, 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 blah. They lean back, and maybe they lean back because they got a knife, and they're they're rearing back to really, you know, give it to you. Maybe they're leaning back because you just hit them with an the elbow. Whatever. They they sat up though, and they're not quite as close to you. Do this, and from here, if you have a good hold of this person, and maybe even if you don't. Buck your hips, and you good chance you can get them off of you. Now, there are specific techniques to this, um, and this is where I think taking a jujitsu class or watching some other videos uh, may be more helpful, but this is, this is the motion that you want to learn, the basic motion. So there's two parts, basically. There's the sitting up, and you want to do that as quickly as you can. And I'm on my left hand side, which I'm not as good at. So just practicing this, getting that as quick as you can. Is gonna help you a lot. It's so now you're up. And you can grab this person various ways. A couple different ways to do this. And then from here, this is where you want to really bam, and what you're doing is hitting with your hip bone here. And at that point, you can knock them off. So depending on a lot of different things, you know, you might want to come up on your knee, maybe you want to come off your knee, whatever. So that's where training comes in. But this is the basic motion. So practice this motion, experiment with it, um, get some training if you can, uh, look for hip bump sweeps on uh, YouTube and you can find some black belts and more experienced people who can teach you all the little specific things uh, to make this really work for you. But this is the basic motion that I want you to practice. And if nothing else, getting up to this position quickly 
is going to be able to help you. Okay, so something else that can really help you when you're on your back in a fight is engaging your entire body. Your arms, your elbows, your knees, your feet, using everything together can make a huge difference. You know, if somebody's on top of you, it may feel like your legs are immobilized and you only have this. You know, and without really thinking about this, your natural inclination might just to, uh, ah, you know, and that's, that's not really gonna help you. But if you can get your feet involved, that's gonna make a huge difference. And so doing something like this, just playing with the ball, trying to keep it off the ground, using both your hands and feet, trying to get them coordinated together in a common um, goal is really gonna help. Um, this is kind of silly, but it's really just to just activate this part of your brain to get everything working in coordination because it's not something we typically do. You know, our, usually our feet are walking or whatever and our hands are doing something completely different. You know, if we're fighting, you know, your leg might just be down or whatever. Get them engaged, get them involved. Use them for leverage, use them to help you control um, working on this. And that's gonna help you immensely. So just something silly like this. You can use a, a big yoga ball, you can probably use a pillow. Um, a basketball might be on the small side, but it'll probably work. I've got a medicine ball over there. I don't, I don't want to try that. If it falls on me, I'm a mess. It'll break my nose. <laughs> so yeah, use your knees, use your feet, use your legs, and just kind of play with the ball, move it around. Okay, so when you are on your back, There's a few different ways it can happen. And some are definitely worse than others. So Nate is on top of me with his legs on the outside. His weight is on top of me. It's pretty easy for him to dominate me. This is called mount. And this is one of the worst positions I can be in. Um, my legs are pretty much useless. I can't do much with them um, to fight him. He can easily punch. He's got all the freedom and control in the world. If he wants to get up and run away, he can. If he wants to pin me down, he can. This sucks. I do not want to be in this position. However, and this may be counterintuitive, counterintuitive, especially to women, but this is a much better position to be in. My legs are on the outside. And from here, I can control him. I can pull him close to me like this. I can push him back by doing that. Try to get away from me. Try to get up. Get up. Stand up. <laughs> I can pull him right back down. So this is this is a much better position to be in. I have much better control over him. This is this is called closed guard, and there's a lot of attacks from here if you uh, study jujitsu. And so if you are gonna go on your back, that's the way to go on your back, with the clothes guard. And uh, don't underestimate the uh, power yes. of legs. Of legs. <laughs> legs. <laughs> legs. Legs in your feet when you're controlling someone. So when you may have seen in um, some of our videos where we fight each other and wrestle each other, um, a lot of times our legs are intertwined with each other and that's because you can control the person. You can limit their movement and the more you can do that, the easier it is to fight them. So even just hooking your, your, uh, your foot, like, oh, let me the other side. So even hooking your foot like this, it's surprisingly hard to get away from that and can throw you off balance. Because if yeah. he wants to move, you have to, a lot of times you have to shift your body. You know, if I'm, if, if I push him or something and he wants to keep his balance, he has to put a hand down or he has to move his leg over. 
But if my foot has him hooked here and then I give him a push, he wants to go that way and he can't, oh, he falls over. If he wants to use leverage and try to move around some kind of way, I can kind of keep him off balance just with this. And it's surprisingly effective. Until you experience it for yourself, you may not believe how effective it is, but it, it is, it's annoying. Uh, so use that, try to get your feet and legs entangled with the other persons and you can control them and minimize the damage that they can do to you. Now, my challenge for you, you have all these different movements and concepts and strategies. Um, you're probably familiar with the concept of shadow boxing, but what would be really helpful for you, even if you don't have a partner or a child or anybody to practice with, is shadow, <laughs> I don't know, ground fighting? <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. And so, um, start, start on your feet, because most, most things are gonna start on your feet. And if you want to do a little bit of shadow boxing to start off, you know, great. That's a fantastic warm up. In fact, that's one of my favorite warm ups for most of my workouts. I almost always start with shadow boxing. And at some point, I want you to do a break fall. If you're not sure what a break fall is, check out this video and I explain it. Um, I forget the timestamp, but it is in the description of that video. Um, but do a break fall. So, you know, I'll just demonstrate real quick. And then once you're on the ground, sit back up and practice scooting around. Pretend like you're actually fighting someone. Pretend like someone's actually attacking you. You know, what, what, what do you do? Get this. <laughs> Pretend like somebody's actually attacking you. Um, pretend like there's, you know, you're in a real fight. What do you do? You're gonna move around. You're gonna try to position yourself so that your feet stay there. If you feel like it, do a technical get up. Um, but maybe focus more on staying on the ground. Maybe at some point, you know, you can throw a kick. You know, you can maybe get a couple of those out. Practice that. Leave me alone. You know, whatever. Um, at some point, they get you all the way on your back. So now, you try to still control them with your feet, keeping your head up, moving your arms around. All right, now, they've got you completely on your back. They're on top of you. Evade some of those punches as best you can. Retaliate, grab, evade the punches. Punch if you can, elbow, grab that eye gouge. You know, hold that. At some point, boom, get back up. That's what I want you to work on. And you can take that as far as you want. Do, say, one minute rounds, take a 30 second break, do another minute round, 30 second break. Do that maybe three times. Try different combinations, different things, experiment, have fun with it. Uh, the more you do that, the more comfortable you'll be with it, the quicker you'll be with it. Um, and better prepared for, cross your fingers, hope you're never attacked, hope you never have to use this, but in case you do, you're gonna be better prepared for it. Oh, leave me, ah! Ah! <laughs> Attack. So if you can do that with a partner, even better. It's a bit more fun, a bit more realistic, but you can do it by yourself too, as I demonstrated earlier. <sighs> All right, guys, I think that's, for this, that's it for this one. Um, 
please share this with video if you enjoyed it, if you thought it was helpful. I'd like to especially get um, as many women as possible more comfortable fighting on the ground, um, improving their self-defense. It's really, it's, it's, it's for everyone. Um, so please share this as much as you can, like and subscribe, leave me some comments down below if you have questions, suggestions, anything you didn't quite understand. I'll do some follow-up videos as necessary. Stay safe out there. Happy National Preparedness Month, and I will see you in the next video.